Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in. You are tuned in to The Encourager, and I uh, hope you're doing good today, doing well. I am, uh, I was up late into the, into the morning. Actually, I f fell asleep and woke up. <laughs> um, I think around one. Yeah, around one. Um, so, yeah. Hope you're doing well again. Let's go ahead and get started with our angel numbers this morning. Thank you so much, everyone who's tuning in, uh, subscribers, returning listeners, and new listeners. <laughs> I turned to page to number 444 <laughs> um, in the angel numbers book. So let's go ahead and get started, everyone. As always, giving credit where credit is due, and credit for this book goes to mystic michella okay so let's go ahead and get started with our first angel number and let's do right page upper right or left excuse me optimism i like it i am i consider myself an ultimate optimist <laughs> uh, your angels want you to be optimistic about what is to come although it's important to acknowledge both good and bad in your life i think we had this recently your angels want you to spend more time focusing on the good today as the day goes on. Make a list of all the wonderful things and see and experience no matter how small the things you experience and you see. So um, gratitude, right? We always practice gratitude. Gratitude opens the door for more blessings. If you're not thankful for what you got, you're not going to get more of what you want. <laughs> that needs to be on the t-shirt. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with our next angel number. Let's go left page, upper right, paralyzed. <laughs> this reminds me of a song by uh, Finger Eleven, I think. I'm not paralyzed, but I seem to be struck by you. I want to make you move because you're standing still. If your body matches what your eyes can do, you'll probably move right through me on my way to you. <laughs> uh, 759. All right. So that number could be significant to you, however it may go. Okay. Um, that is a, uh, that is a 21, right? So, uh, that's important to me. That's seven, seven, seven. Uh, so yeah, that's important. Um, fear holds you back paralyzed. Your angels remind you that your fear is not proof of either success or failure. It's simply a creation of your mind. Remember that. Take action today towards the thing you are scared of and know that the fear you carry in you is an indication that you are pushing the boundaries of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And that this is this is how great things get done. OK. And yeah, 759. Right? And so, uh, yeah. And so being paralyzed, the same thing, stagnation. Right. We can also use that word, uh, inter those two words interchangeably often. So, yes. Um, so for me, uh, again, I go through my constant regular evaluation of why do I do what I do uh, and, and whether or not whatever process it is, is working. And it doesn't matter in which way with a thought process or uh, uh, anything. Right. Um, and. I think the important thing to remember is to always focus on focus on I almost said your happy place. <laughs> focus on the things that bring you joy. Folk and be genuine about that, okay? Don't feel like you're obligated just because someone presents an offer to you, okay? You don't need to just jump into it so the other side of that coin also exists, right? So and the opposite of being paralyzed is being um, uh, is not being cautious, you know, and not, and not being aware of, of, you know, how fast things are going or or carelessly jumping into situations. Right. So you have to balance those two things. Right. Um, not being paralyzed 
and also not going so fast that you don't see the signs and the wonders. I remember watching, uh, what's the movie? Um, oh, Bruce Almighty. When Jim Carrey is driving down the street, everything's going wrong. He's driving down the street and he's like, God, ur, send me a sign. Ur. And his truck drives by and his truck says all these signs and it's a stop road ends, like all these things. <laughs> and he's not paying attention. So he's so caught up in his whatever world because he's so he wants things to go so fast so he's not paying attention and then he ends up wrecking his car right and blames that on god of course too and that's how many people live their lives before they awaken to the fact that life is happening for them not to them and they are the manifestors of what they bring to them so if you mistreat others then you can expect things to come back to you right um you can also Miss indicators that most high is trying to awaken you, right? That can also, those are situations that can also paralyze you if you're not hearing clearly from most high. Situations can paralyze you because you end up staying in them far longer than you should, right? So there's all sorts of ways to look at each and every, each and every word of wisdom that most high releases to us, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and look at, um... Uh, let's see, a lower number, um, what page should we turn to, 50, okay, we're on page 51, let's do lower left, heal others, that's why I'm here, you can sense others' feelings as clearly as your own, I am an empath, your angels validate, validate that you are a highly sensitive being, Volunteer some time in something you feel drawn to help out someone who otherwise wouldn't ask for it, ask for aid, but can benefit from it. Or read up on ways to turn your empathy into action. Okay? And that's the number 17. Okay? So, um, so yes. So, when we're taking a look at ourselves, uh, or our situation ourselves, we take a look at, at us, okay, and going through that evaluation process, uh, definitely pay it forward. I absolutely 100% believe in that without question. I believe in, in paying it forward. I believe in doing unto others as you would have them do unto you, even though most many people will not do unto you as you do unto them. You just have to learn to filter through that process because, excuse me, confirmation burp, what I have learned is that this place is a balance. And unfortunately, and even I have a tough time grasping this, but bad things happening to good, good people. And when I say good people, I mean, truly good people, like the earth angels and the the light workers and star seeds of this place that bring light, you know, that are unalived and stuff like that. See, those those are the things that bother me. Um because I don't know. I don't know. It's just tough. I don't know. That that just bothers me for some reason. Um because even with my own situation, I will share this uh, before I let you guys go, even in my own tumultuous karmic relationships and all of that sort of thing and dealing with the false twin and, uh, all or someone who made an, a, a dumbass decision, you know, they chose wrongly and, or poorly, <laughs> um, I still... Even though I've grown to where I am, and that was a lot of it, you know, um, I would say I was semi-awake before that, um, before going through that process in the dark night of the soul and everything. But in me, some part of me still believes that all of that wasn't necessary um, and that some parts could have been alleviated or avoided. And I just tend to think that way. I just that's I don't know what you call that. I don't know what that is. I just tend to believe that not everything needs to be a, a crawl through the mud experience and and 
I just don't believe that. I believe in Most High communicating with us and talking to us and telling us telling us things to avoid and everything not being a war. You know, I believe that. But sometimes the war is necessary because that's the only way to get, get the attention of those involved in the situation. Um, and that includes myself. And, uh, and so I don't, I don't always agree with most highs processes. Uh, uh, and we have conversation about that. Um, uh, thankfully, um, he, thankfully my, my concerns are heard, considered, um, yeah, I hope they are. Well, I know they are. I know they are being heard and considered. Uh, I don't know what types. <laughs> I don't know what types of uh, uh, spiritual principles, you know, uh, and that sort of thing um, are being changed. It was eleven eleven when I looked down at the timer. Um, yeah, I don't know about that, but that is something that bothers me, and I talk to Most High all the time about his processes because. Not everyone needs to be strapped down in the chair. You know what I mean? Some people you can just say, have a seat and they will nicely sit down. Not everyone needs a straight jacket. And that's my, that's my challenge with some of these, some of these processes, uh, uh, here. Um, a lot of that frustration also has to deal with me being who I am. Um, and the fact that being in a place that is the exact opposite of unconditional love currently, uh, or at least that's not what's being, that's not the majority that bothers me. So a lot of what I'm bothered by has to deal with who I am being, being the unconditional healer and empath, unconditional lover and healer and empath and extraterrestrial. A lot of my being uncomfortable here has a lot to do with that um, more than it does most highs processes probably. Um, and I'm becoming better at understanding that getting better at understanding that, um, to, to better function here. Um, and so, uh, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope that you're getting something out of the angel numbers and, uh, and you're doing your due diligence. Again, I always encourage us to look up your natal chart, Find out where you were born. If you were born on the 222nd day of the year, 245th day of the year, eight, 345th day of the year, you were born on the 8th day of the year, the 21st day of the year, the 82nd day of the year, look these numbers up. These numbers are significant. Your angels and ancestors use this information, the stars in the sky, they use this information to communicate with you. All of these are portals. The stars are portals. The sun is a portal. The moon is a portal. We have retrogrades. We read about retrogrades in the first gospel of Jesus Christ yesterday as we were finishing up that that book, um, uh, that first book of the gospel of Jesus Christ covered its infancy up to the age of 13. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, we know that retrogrades are a real thing. And even Yeshua, Jesus, the ascended master, that ascended master, spoke about and knew about the retrogrades okay there's not a it's not a mystery why he will spend 40 days and 40 nights at a time and other times alone in isolation maybe out in the desert or what have you um that's not a mystery because he was dealing with the same things that you and i did in fact he had to in order for his resurrection to be victorious he had to okay Fourteen, fourteen. looking at the clock so again, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you are doing well. I hope you are comfortable with yourself today and loving yourself and who you are, who you are becoming. Uh, and every day you're taking steps in becoming your highest, purest, truest version of yourself. Okay. As always, be encouraged and tune in again soon.